In this video, we're going to machine the base of our crank stand with lost foam casting. Every lost foam casting project I have usually starts in covering it in the drywall slurry that I've made up. There's no actual recipe, but basically I take that drywall mud that you get for like from home hardware that you spread on your walls as a paste, and I basically mix it down and water it down until it'll cover the part just a little bit. I mean, we don't want it to go too, too thick on there. And then I'm just gonna grab an air hose or a blower and we're going to blow on it until we pop all those little tiny air bubbles that are hiding underneath the surface that you can't see. Those are going to be little boogers later when you're done your casting and you'll know exactly what it is when you see it. Now let's take it out to the foundry. We let that dry overnight thoroughly. Now we're going to start this foundry up and we're going to go through the process. No wait, we're having a bit of problem. I was running low on diesel and I decided to add some oil, clean oil, to the diesel with a bit of gasoline. And this was an attempt to kind of lower the viscosity of everything. However, we've kind of made a big mess of it and we've actually got to play with some of the setting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play with the, the richness or the leanness of the air going in. And by turning in the airflow down a little bit, it's going to allow that igniter to burn the oil. But the problem is, is it's not going to be pushing enough air in there and it's going to burn quite a bit more dirty than it was before. The good news is, as that pump kind of heats everything up, it's going to heat that oil up and increase, well, lower the vis increase the viscosity. Well, you know what I mean. It'll make it a little bit better as the day goes on. So as always to the sand pit, <laughs> and we're finding a few treasures in there as well. We should probably sift this out here soon. So I'm obviously using a different container for holding all the sand in that I did last time. This is a really basic box that I built. I screwed the living bejesus out of it to hold it together because we're going to vibrate it but there's nothing super special about the container that we're holding it in. It's just a matter of just pouring the sand in, filling it up around the foam, and then vibrating it and compacting the sand. The key here is, is we're gonna dig a little tiny hole in here when we put this in, and then we're gonna bed it right down. And we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we don't warp this foam at all, because obviously the end product's gonna be warped if we warp it in the sand. So lots of care should be taken right here to fill everything in and get it bedded just right before we start putting all that sand on top of it. And speaking of care, <laughs> it, it looks like I broke the end of this off. So easily enough, it's a pretty quick fix. I'm just gonna grab this hot glue gun here and I'm gonna make sure that everything is glued right on. We don't want this breaking off or it's gonna cause us a lot of problems down the road, i.e. that little piece breaking off and the sand stopping everything from going where it should be. Now let's take the sand here and hold everything upright and then delicately and finely put it on top. Keep note that I'm holding the tops of this as I'm putting it on to make sure that I don't have everything fall over to one side. If it falls over to one side the sand's not going to get in there and then it's going to burn a hole in the box and it's just not going to be happiness in the end. And now for the second step is grabbing the recipe saw and vibrating everything in. You know what, in reality, do you need a recip saw? No, but it does help quite a bit. I've done some lost foam casting in the past and actually just used a hammer, like a small hammer on the side of the box and then just wrapped up, tapped it and it's worked just as good, surprisingly, but this is a lot more convenient to use if you have one. <laughs> one of the mistakes I made today was is I didn't quite time everything exactly right, but for once, I've actually got extra time at the end of everything, and I'm gonna have a little bit of time to spare because the aluminum's still melting in the pot. So today I'm kind of missing a little bit of my PPE. Don't worry, I'm gonna put it on slowly as I do this. However, it's probably not a good idea to be doing what we're doing here, but uh, let's throw some safety into the wind and uh, throw some aluminum in there and hope nothing's wet. So let's break this comment down here really quick. So where people get into trouble here is they take aluminum that's got water on it and they put it in a molten pot of aluminum or lead or what have you. And water expands 1800 times its size. <laughs> and needless to say, it's not too long before that expands and you have aluminum all over your beautiful backyard and probably all over you as well. So remember, dry your aluminum out thoroughly and take your time when you're putting the stuff in. Now that we're up to temperature, let's scrape this dross off here and get pouring these parts.
And speaking of pouring these parts here, we're gonna have some really good learning here. I'm sure you've noticed already, we're only five minutes into the video of a 15 minute video. And this is where all the learning's happening. Now notice as we're pouring this in here, this cup's gonna go dry. Now, this is, <laughs> this is really crucial here. I, I keep harping on about how the cup can't go dry. Notice all the flame here. It's just an absolute fucking nightmare. However, there's something to be learned out of this. When that cup goes dry, all the walls of the sand collapse in. Now, people wonder what's holding the sand back from, from all the, the science and everything. It's just the aluminum that's holding the walls back. So if that cup runs dry, you run out of aluminum, the sand collapses in on it. Let's have a detailed look here in a second of what that's actually going to look like. And don't worry, in the end of this video, we're going to have some really, really good parts out of it all on the second lapse through all of this. And there's even some more learning to have you had too. Let's dump this out here and have a closer look at these parts. So at first glance here, it looks like I got away with it. I was kind of suspecting something had gone wrong when I was pouring it, but on a closer look, we're going to see a little bit more of the problems of what we're talking about. And those problems are inclusions in the metal. Inclusions are basically folds of oxide layers. So if you look right over here, let's put it up on the bench and have a closer look. There's actually folds in the metal and this is not going to be a satisfactory part. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and quickly whip up a couple more parts and cast them the next day. And you know what? It turned out because I'm casting the next day, I actually had time for the mail to show up. And thanks to KBC Tools, they sent me out a quarter inch ball end mill that's carbide. And this thing is never, ever going to go dull while I'm cutting foam with it. And even if I'm cutting aluminum with it, it's going to last almost forever. I mean, carbide is such a good metal and it's such a good quality tool as well. Now that we got that dried overnight, let's throw the foundry on and let's get casting these parts again. So the one thing I absolutely love, and I keep saying this about casting aluminum is, is I can make mistakes on my parts and I can just recast them. I mean, this is a, well, it looks good, but it's actually a terrible casting and it can easily be fixed. All I gotta do is chop this up with a skill saw. Yeah, that's right. The skill saw is still running. I had to throw a new blade on it, but I can just chop it up with regular tools uh, for the most part if I don't love them and then just throw it back in the pot and remelt it. And just like that, it starts all over again and we're going to make some more parts. Something also I learned as well is I dug a hole in the ground because I was tired of bending over funny and it's quite a high apparatus that I have. So I dug about a foot hole in the ground so I don't have to lift this all up as high. Then we go through the same process, fill it with sand, vibrate it, and this time I've got a bigger cup. That was the problem that I had last time. I had the little tiny soup can and it just wasn't enough to get it to work. This time I've got the great big can and we're gonna nail this, you watch. Oh, and a good learning point here, I snuck in an extra casting for something else and it's kind of sticking out of the top here. Now, normally if I didn't do anything about it, I just tried sneaking and covering it up with sand, I would have a major problem. It would blow out. Basically the pressure would shoot out there, but I'm gonna do a cheat here. Can you guess what I'm gonna do? What would you do? Well, that's right. I'm gonna grab a fire brick. I'm gonna slap it on top with a big metal weight and that should stop the blowout from happening later on down the road. And being that this is the fourth time I melted this metal down, I'm starting to get a lot of slag floating to the top. That's a lot of oxides and impurities that are coming out of the metal. And this is probably gonna be the last time that I'm gonna use, oh shoot. This is probably gonna be the last time that I use this aluminum because we're gonna nail this casting and we're not gonna to have to go through this process again. And now, now for the exciting part, and this has gotta be the most thrilling and exciting part of it all. It involves danger, mystery, trivia, <laughs> you name it. It's the actual pouring the part, casting part. And notice how I have the bigger can this time. We're gonna fill that up and we're gonna keep it full the whole time. In fact, I'm gonna put a lot of focus into it 
because I don't want to do this again. Also, notice that I don't have as much flamage as I did on the other casting. This is simply because there's not as much gas coming out of there because I've got it all covered and it's pushing the gas through the sand. Now, let's let this cool down for about 20 minutes and we're going to have a really close look at this and talk about some things that we did right. Remember that brick that we put over top of it to stop it from blowing out? Well, guess what? It actually worked. I'm, I'm not surprised, but I'm surprised. Nothing came out of that little part of hole there. No, it's the strongman competition. I just got to figure out a system. I know I've been talking about building an overhead crane forever, but I've got to get a system for lifting all this up because this is getting a little bit hard on the old back. I'm guessing this whole contraption weighs maybe 75, 100 pounds, somewhere in there. And it's getting to be a little bit much. And you know what? It looks like we absolutely nailed this one. This is success. There's no occlusions, there's no nothing. Let's clean this up a little bit and we'll have a little bit of a closer look at this all. Oh, and if you're wondering what that other project was in the background, that's just them finishing up this Maltese cross for the local fire department. I had a second one that was a failed casting and I just casted another little tiny part so I can cut and splice everything in. Now, I'm just using a regular wire brush here. Pretty simple, pretty basic, just to clean that stuff off. Now, I learned my lesson before throwing this while it was hot in water because it's changing a bit of the structure of the metal when I do that. So if you have any of those little tiny aluminum boogers on there, it's super easy. Just knock them off with a chisel and sometimes they even come off with a wire wheel. Man, this thing turned out fantastic. And you might want to check out the next video where we're going to machine this and the upper part and we're going to put it all together and test some stuff out. Now it's just a matter of filling in the hole so the wife doesn't find out what I did.